So I'll give you a little garden tour. This is coming from our driveway, which we recently got paved all the way down, which is really nice. That's our hillside over there. And here we've got a, a mango that produced a few mangoes last year. A lychee in the background. This is like a native tree with these little pepper, pepper things that grow on it. <clears throat> this is a star apple tree. Beautiful, beautiful growth and beautiful color on the on the bottom of the leaves. They produce a nice purple fruit. They haven't fruited yet. But they ha I had some in Hawaii that fruited beautifully. There's a big mango tree, or that's about four or five years that we planted it, and that's producing quite a lot of fruit. Got these uh, golden grevilleas back there. And this light cheap fruiting last year, and a, a strawberry guava. Another lychee. This is my new area of the garden. <coughs> I've just recently planted some lychees and mangoes and guavas. Suriname cherries. That's, even though it's lost all its leaves, it's a persimmon. They lose their leaves at this time of year. And here you can see little guavas all developing there. Another mango tree back here bird netting, Suriname cherry. This is a nice mango too, produced a bunch of fruit. Lychee. This is a beautiful lychee here. I only planted these two or three years ago. They're growing so well. This is taken off. This is a uh, um, jacaranda. Purple flowers and a Beautiful. You can see the birds love this back here. This uh, type of grevillea, red grevillea of some sort. No. This is a loquat. This is a ground growing grevillea. Beautiful flowers. The birds love them as well. Another lychee here. This is a golden glory grevillea. You can actually shake it like that oh yeah and it gets nectar so you can actually I don't know if you can see little drops of the nectar there but they taste beautiful mm. you can soak these flowers in water and make a drink a beautiful refreshing drink out of it this is a mulberry they lose their leaves at this time of year it's a it's June at the moment so we're in the early stages of winter. Another lychee tree with my bird netting I left on that. And the mango and lychee. You can tell I'm a lychee fan. And these banksias I put in here and here. That one flowered for the first time. This is another loquat. Some small citrus that have been struggling a bit. Another Banksia. I love the Banksia flowers. Oh, here's one that's just flowered. Amazing Australian flower. Um, I'm going to use a lot of the flowers here for making flower essences. As time goes by, I need to do a bit of regeneration on this part of the garden. But <coughs> back there's a neem tree, actually. Uh, right, right there as well. Neem is an incredibly medicinal plant from India. Used as an antiviral, antibacterial plant. These are some of the older Banksia flowers. That's a native Australian. I've forgotten exactly what that is. This is lemon myrtle. Lemon myrtle is, they make an essential oil out of the leaves of this, and it's one of the most powerful antiviral essential oils. It's got a great smell like lemon, but a bit different than lemon, but um, I actually wrote to the health minister uh, about lemon myrtle, saying that they should use the oil, or they should do first of all do tests on it to see how well it combats the COVID-19 virus. Um, he was an idiot and basically wrote back to me saying there's no tests been done on it, so they don't know. I'm like, I just wrote to you asking that tests should be done because there've been tests on other essential oils like eucalyptus and things that have been very effective against other forms of coronavirus like H1N1 and different things like that. 
Anyway, that's the, the uh, quality of the government we have here in Australia. They're really stupid. It's an Australian plant. They can make a lot of money out of it. But they seem to be financed a lot by pharmaceutical companies here, so they're not interested in natural stuff. This is another star apple. A longin here. This is a wattle, black wattle. This um, is actually a peach and nectarine tree. They lose all their leaves in the winter. And you can see it's just starting to flower now. Same with this. So a lot of its leaves, but you can see all the little buds coming back onto it. That's going to break out into a huge amount of flowers soon. Put some bamboo in. Here's a, a longin tree. So longins are a small, um, a small fruit, a bit like a. Hmm, brown lychee, but smaller, I suppose you could describe it. This one hasn't fruited yet, but I'm sure it will soon. Here's a coffee plant. So you can see the coffee coffee uh, beans starting to grow. And the, you can actually eat um, the berries, but obviously the bean inside needs to be cooked properly. But that's a coffee berry. And uh, you can eat them. And that's the coffee bean. Another longin tree here, native hibiscus, a mulberry. That's another neem tree. These are called Suriname cherries. You can see they're just starting to develop some cherries on them now. And they're a great source of vitamin C and they grow really well in Queensland. Longin, a rosemary. Mmm, those coffees are nice. This is a beautiful little Queensland acacia with uh, nice flowers. They, they have a beautiful smell. Mmm, all the bees and birds love them. So I just got to go back to this coffee plant and get another one of them because they were really nice. You want to go for your darker colored ones. Something like that. Hmm. So this part of our garden, I've got even lychees that have been grown from seed. So it's doing quite well. It's got a yellow flowering plant around it. Um, it's supposed to be invasive, but we're just leaving it in there. But it's, it's doing really nicely from seed. That's another Suriname cherry, another loquat, a frangipani or plumeria. It's that's a sea grape. Um, that's a Malabar chestnut there. And uh, another Suriname cherry. Guava. It's like a strawberry guava. And uh, these are um, good for chop and drop. They, they produce nitrogen. Nice flowers. Some smaller trees here. That's a native lime, nice mulberry. This is a lily pilly. So lily pillies are a native Australian fruiting tree. They produce these little fruits that are quite uh, tart, but actually full of vitamin C. So Aboriginal people used to eat these a lot. I eat them now and uh, I like them. Mm. Yeah, the tart. The coffee ones were quite sweet. I love walking around my garden, just picking fruits. That's a bunch of mulch. We got a bunch of trees mulched recently. This is another lychee tree. And the native that we put in there. I think it's a burdekin plum, but I'm not sure. And, uh, another lychee. This is a big guava tree that we, that har that we harvested from just recently. Uh, produced a lot of fruit. And over here, we've got what we call the mounds area. These are some bananas that are struggling because they haven't had enough rain. I use that cardboard to suppress weeds around the garden. So, so this is our, we have six mounds that we put in. And there's another sort of half one at the front here. Um, this one takes a lot of work to get rid of all the weeds and things, but that's a mango. There's a pawpaw there, pawpaw at the back there. That's a soursop. 
tree. The leaves are really good for uh, fighting cancer. Some native trees there. Another star apple here. And uh, I'm going to go over these mounds. I got a cage my trees, otherwise the wallabies eat them. That's a small citrus tree. These are wattle trees that we put in from um, like five inches high have now become quite big. They provide shade and we can do what's called chop and drop. This is uh, mugwort. Mugwort grows like crazy. And again, we cut it back and produce uh, mulch for the garden, but you can use it in herbal medicine. It's what moxibustion sticks are made out of. So this is a, a male pawpaw, because you can see it only has flowers on it. So they have three types of pawpaws, males, females, and um, hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites, that's obviously a female. It's got missing its top, but it's got all fruit on it. Uh, this is aloe vera, aloe vera flowers. So we'll go to the next mound here. That's more sour sop. That's a wampy up here. That produced fruit for the first time in the summer a few months ago. Little yellow fruits. It's a tree that's from, uh, I think it's from Indonesia or Malaysia. And uh, another Suriname cherry, some aloe vera with a nice jacaranda tree and some papayas and pawpaws in the front. Some of these are a bit diseased. We need to probably get rid of them. But, uh, these are some more lychee trees that I put in and a mango, another wampy, I believe. These are going to come out of some beautiful flowers. Oh, that's a, um, a sapote tree of some sort, I think. Uh, white sapote. So that's a tropical fruit. I haven't had them yet. That's a tropical apple. I need to cage that again. Sour sob. And up here, we've got a lot more papayas. They're, they're pretty healthy. Mango tree growing in the shade of that acacia tree. And uh, different flowering plants there. Over here's a guava tree at the back and a big jackfruit tree. I'll go and have a quick look at them while the neighbor's dog's quiet because he always barks. So yeah, that's a... A beautiful guava tree here. A citrus, mandarin, I believe. This is a jackfruit, which is the world's biggest fruit. Obviously, it's not fruiting right now, but uh, it's come up really well. I only planted that a few years ago. Another guava, needs a bit of water. Here, it's, we haven't got a chance to weed it all, but there's more sour sops and flowering acacias and things like that. Um, but we'll come back up here. So we put these mounds as ways and we put cardboard down here and put mulch over everything to stop the weeds. Big job, especially as Corey's pregnant. We've got to look after Ellie as well and I run a whole business. It's just us looking after it. So that's a lychee, sour sop, lychee, um, Put in another mango here, sour salt. Uh, what's that again? That's one of those. Uh, oh. These are common. I think that's a rosella. We make jam out of these. So this has all been just five years since we bought the property. Another mango. That wompy. Mulberry back there, another mulberry. Putting in some more banksias. There's a bunch of trees back there that we need to uncover along with a lot of mugwort. These are acacias. And uh, I'll take you down here to what I call our new forest garden. So winter in Queensland is pretty dry and you can see that dam. This is our first dam. It's uh, almost empty. Um, got more in our other dam though. But this is an area that was filled with this uh, ground lantana, which is a weed that overtakes this area. And so what I did, the whole area was filled with weeds. So I cleared out all the weeds and wood chipped all the small branches. And then what I've been doing is planting 
fruit trees through here. And uh, that's like a magnolia, port wine magnolia, which are beautiful smelling mango here. And um, there's an avocado tree there uh, and uh, nectarines and uh, port wine magnolias and avocados, guavas, citrus over here. And um, down the back here, I got a lot more, more lychees. So instead of just having to poison this area, what I've done is just tried to cardboard over a lot of the weeds and put some mulch there. I haven't got enough mulch yet, but um, here's the lychee. There's another guava, mango. Uh, and uh, through here, we got some more, another lychee over here. Guava back there. This one's got some nice new growth on it. So I cage them to prevent the uh, wallabies from eating them. Um, and then we've got more lychees here. Different types, so I go for all sorts of different, there's a lot of varieties of lychees. So I'm going for like Tai So and Kwai Mai Pink, and uh, this is a Tai So back here. Um, they're, they're all different sizes of lychee and different flavors. That's another lychee. Here's a bigger one. Um, this one's doing quite well. I forgot what variety this is. I should say. Oh, no, some of them just say a lychee. Uh, but I've cultivated these in pots as well for a while before planting them. And I did lose some. I lost a sapodillo, which is one of my favorite fruits when I planted it. This is a nice lychee. I've got to clear that tree that's fallen. So basically it's sort of bushland back here on our property. And uh, as I say, just was overtaken by weed. So it's a conversion process. A fig, a black mission fig, I believe. Um, uh, no, it's a white Adriatic fig. These are small star apple trees. And I don't usually have to cage them, cause, but something is eating it. Um, raspberry. And this is an area I've only just been working on during the pandemic, basically. So 2020, 2021, another star apple here, star apple, mango, uh, grape, Rio red grapefruit, uh, another guava, another lychee, mango. So, you know, in the next few years, this area hopefully will take off. This is a citrus. I'm just going to re put that in the ground. It's a. Uh, what is it again? It's a mandarin, an Ellendale mandarin. Here it gets a lot more sun, so I'm planting more banksias, uh, macadamia nut back there. Oh, there it is. Hard to see. I'll go up closer. So macadamia nuts are actually from this part of Australia. But they still... I transplanted that from an area where it wasn't doing so well. Um, but yeah, so this is my latest part of the garden. I'll take you on a part that's... Like another part that's established though as well. So for this final part of the garden tour, I wanted to show you a few different things. This is my nursery area where I get plants, either buy them, or I uh, have seeds growing. Just bought some sapodillo trees, and some Alfonso mango trees, and cocoa something tree, uh, mango, casturi mangoes, which were purple mango. Uh, a nice lychee tree that produces large fruits. So I'm gonna repot those. This is our magnesium swimming pool. So magna pool. Uh, Magnesium helps you to relax. You can see a lot of lychees, and we take the heads off of pineapples as well. And you can and replant them. Um, you can see all sorts of there's mangoes here, there's avocados from seeds, uh, pineapples, and lychees, and uh, yeah, yeah, all sorts of stuff growing in here. Papayas, there's some big pineapples at the back there. Okay, so that's our nursery area. I need to sort through it actually and just, you know, repot stuff. That's one of my jobs for today.
And here's our entrance to our veggie garden. So we have some big Suriname cherries, lemon verbena, which is a beautiful, a beautiful tea that can be made out of it with a lot of healing properties. Beautiful smell, lemongrass out the front here. Papayas that are growing really nicely. Birds like to get them before we do, but look at that big, beautiful clump of papayas there. Um, yeah, and then we'll go into the veggie garden itself. This is my kind of crazy repotting area. Over here we had actually little stevia growing and um, little strawberries and things. So in amongst all this, and this is uh, a nitrogen fixing plant. The name will come to me in just a second, pigeon pea. And yeah, we're growing that all over the place so that we can use get nitrogen that fixes from the air and use it. So a bit of a pumpkin was randomly growing. Pumpkin patch. Um, not sure, but you can see some pumpkins there. Over here, again, more pigeon pea, which we do use as a chop and drop. Cut it up and put it in the garden. Uh, passion fruit vine growing all through here. You can see some nice passion fruits growing on the vine. We just planted in here. I need to water there. Some ginger. Papayas. And this lime tree is absolutely incredible. It produces so many limes. Uh, they're all over the place down there, you can see. And I've got like boxes of them already, just from one tree. And I make a, a lime water. Here's a few more nursery, like lychees growing. This is a nice mango tree that was here when we got here. Same with the lime tree. Possum's eating a lot of the mangoes though. Um, Thai basil, or basil, as they say in North America. Beautiful smell. Uh, blueberries back there and uh, tomatoes this is a gooseberry tree or mugwort papayas Chinese uh, leafy greens in the veggie garden here so I think I'm not sure pak soy maybe um, we're just about to revamp a lot of these veggie gardens but you've got you've got sage here so I make a tea of that if anybody's got a sore throat or not feeling so well um, chives, chilies, you can see the red chilies down here. Um, marjoram, oh no, so oregano or oregano, depends on your pronunciation. Um, some holy basil back in there. This is a, a longan tree, so mulching it. Um, thyme. Beautiful again in a nice tea. Mm. Sage, thyme, uh, leafy greens back there. Some chives. We just replanted that garden bed as well. And uh, pineapple sage. That's another lychee. Ice cream bean tree. Papaya. And uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, moringa. Um, dragon fruits all around the edges of the garden. That's what these are. They've been producing some nice fruits. A mango tree. That was a bit stunted when we bought the place, but we're just revamping it. We need some love. Got dragon fruits around the edge of the garden, especially in areas where the soil's not so good. And, uh, we'll go out here now to this part of our garden to unlock the gate. Up there is our big water tank that we have. And it's not really fertile ground up there, so we just leave that as all bush. And put some natives like macadamia nuts around the edges here as the ground becomes more fertile. And um, so over here we've got mulberries. And on the edge there, more dragon fruits. And then star apples. And the pomegranate. The front there it's not doing so well but yeah the star apple's going okay for this this isn't the best part of our garden sour sops um, another suriname cherry sour sop papaya 
pawpaw. Small lemon myrtle tree. Sour sop. It's called Mother of Herb. It grows quite full on, but it's like really strong. And if you're feeling sick again, you can have a leaf of this. And, whoa, it's strong. I eat it sometimes. I don't really feel like it right now. It's not the best tasting. But uh, this is a native tree that we planted. A grapefruit over here. They'll be ready soon. Just a few. This is a black sapote. With some bamboo that we put in behind it. So they're a slow growing tree, but you know, they're like black pudding fruit, some people call it. It's actually got new growth on it, which is unusual because it takes a takes a while. Suriname cherry back there. A, so we've got star fruit and star apples. So this is a star fruit. This is that's the five-fingered one. It's like and uh, Another lily pilly, some lemongrass of the mulberry. The mulberries are all losing their leaves this time of year. A nice little guava here. Got a couple fruits on it. And some sal uh, salvias in front. Here's a couple of nice guava fruits growing. Another jackfruit tree. A lime. Go through here, we've got rummy chamas. This is a peach tree that, again, they'll, they're losing their leaves this time of year and are gonna rebud and reflower. Produced a lot. You can see all the new buds and growth about to come out. And uh, acerola cherry here. This produces a lot of fruits. Very rich in vitamin C. More citrus. I gotta recage some of them. The wallabies are getting to them. Um, Mango, the papaya, citrus, a nice big citrus here. And, uh, more bamboo. And we've got um, over there, we've got a black mulberry that produced a lot of fruit. And this is a white mulberry. Again, the time of year they lose their leaves. Another star apple, needs a bit of water. Aloe vera gardens. <laughs> Um, another star apple back there, the citrus, another star apple, and a uh, tamarind, I think it's a native Australian tamarind tree, a peach tree, a moringa tree, more lemongrass, as I was saying, these star apple trees have, they've got a nice bronzy kind of color at the bottom of their leaf, it's beautiful. These are salvias, flowers, lemongrass, citrus of some sort, another star apple. I'll come back through here. And that's the Grummy Chama. Our chestnut. This is a carob tree over here. So they need male and females. We've got a few carob trees around the place. So. And a beautiful Golden Glory Grevillea or Honey Gem Grevillea. I'm not sure which one. More citrus growing here. We had a bit of a hard time with citrus. If you, you know, I uncaged that one and it got eaten by wallabies. But they are growing. Rosemary. Rosemary grows really well here. The coffee. Gravilla, guava. You can see some guava fruits developing here. This is a wampy, and we put that in quite small, and it's produced a lot of fruit last year. Guava, strawberry guavas, soursop. A peach back there again lost its leaves. Another guava. There's a small mango back there. Pineapple guava or uh, fajoa, as they call them in New Zealand. This is our sort of native garden. We've just put in some native trees in here. 
So you can see all the beautiful buds about to, about to burst into life and flowers and start to fruit again on the peach tree. Macadamia nut tree over there. Some bamboo. And this this is kind of more the edge here. Uh, we, we have half our property that's got we put fruit trees and stuff in and macadamia nuts like this one. And then half of it's more bush where we cleared all the invasive lantana and um, allowed koalas to come back, which has been really exciting. If we look back on, this is our, more our orchard area here. We've still got mangoes on the edge here. Different types of mangoes. Again, I got Namdok Mai mangoes, which are over here, which are a Thai mango, um, that are eaten green. And they're small mangoes. Different areas of the property have different quality of soil. We always get some beautiful birds around here as well. And down here is our dam. I'll take you through here. So this is our dam area here. Gets a lot of birds and animals using the dam as well. Uh, it's quite low at the moment, but a little bit of water still in there. Um, but we've had it filled up right over there at the edge over there. And uh, I have to move the pump and everything, so definitely low. I know parts of Australia the other day got like 300 mils of rain. We didn't get any of that nature. We didn't get any rain, actually. Had about 10 mils a couple of weeks ago, but not a lot. So uh, yeah, this time of year, it's our dry season. But yeah, it's a beautiful area here because it's just kind of peaceful with rejuvenating of native forests and lots of birds and things around here. It's a really nice peaceful spot. Sometimes I, I've made paths through the forest, in fact, so people can walk around and be keeping this half our property bushland. So if you end up supporting our programs, taking our courses, this is where your money goes to.